Hi everyone, my name is Addison Oganoski. Uh, I am an electrical engineering major in the College of Engineering. Um, so I worked on a team of um, me and four other, four computer engineers um, to work on a project called Smart EpiPen and um, that served as my senior design project in the College of Engineering. Um, and I worked under Professor Alan Pisano, who is our customer. So this project, we wanted to address some serious issues that um, are presented to people who have, um, who are prescribed EpiPens. So you have to carry an EpiPen with you at all times um, if you have one, because um, allergic reactions can occur whenever, wherever. But they're really easy to forget because emergencies are actually pretty rare. Um, additionally, after you use your EpiPen, you have to contact emergency services due to the adrenaline that's in your system. Um, but unfortunately, for a lot of cases, um, a user may not have access to a cell phone or may not be able to use one, especially in the case of children who have EpiPens. So we wanted to create a system that solves these issues. Um, and to do so, we, we determined that it would have to have these uh, following functions. So we want it to be able to detect when you have an EpiPen emergency um, and use that information to send your GPS location to um, a list of support contacts. And then we will also want to confirm or, or um, notify you if that message has failed to send. Additionally, we want to have um, customizable contact numbers and be able to track emergency data um, and detect an alert when the EpiPen is left behind. So throughout the design process, this was the first visualization we came up with, and it includes all three of our deliverables. So our first deliverable is an EpiPen case um, that when opened, um, charts that as an emergency and sends the GPS location to your support contacts. Um, in the middle, you can see um, we have our second deliverable is a wearable component, and that is what alerts the user if they're separated from their case by a predetermined distance. So it will alarm if you leave your EpiPen behind. And our third deliverable is a web application that interfaces with the case, um, and that's where you can customize your support numbers and um, some other medical information. So after meeting with our customer, um, who was Professor Pisano, we determined um, several objectives and constraints. We wanted to be able to maximize battery life um, and ensure that the case was portable and lightweight. Uh, we also wanted it to be user friendly, meaning that the functions are intuitive um, and have secure medical information as much as possible. It also could not um, require that a user have a cell phone, which was one of the um, initial functions that we determined, and the budget set by the college has to be less than $1,000. So this is our um, preliminary case design. So this was our first step in determining how our case would actually work. Um, so my job as the hardware engineer was to create the case electronics. So this was an important step. Um, so what you can see, um, is that it's a case, the EpiPen fits inside, um, and it opens like a clamshell, and we have these magnetic switches on the front face, and the separation of these switches is, is what determines if your case is open or closed, um, triggering an emergency. We have um, a safe open button so that you can open and close the case to remove your EpiPen if you need to, um, if, if it expires, et cetera. Um, without triggering an emergency message. Um, and then we have an LED to indicate the different states that your case can be in. And we have that color coded on the right. So um, if the LED is green, an emergency message has been sent successfully. If the LED blinks red, um, a, a message has failed to send due to um, net poor network access. Um, purple LED indicates the safe open state. And we also have a button inside the case, so after you send an emergency message, and if it's a false alarm, um, you can press the button and a false alarm message will be sent to uh, your support contacts. So again, I was the only electrical engineer on the team, so um, it was my job to do the um, interior electronics of the case. So this is um, a diagram of how those ended up working out. Um, so we have a cancel button, uh, do we have, no, okay. Um, cancel button, safe open button, um, two magnetic read switches, an LED, um, this black thing here is a buzzer, um, and that would ring when um, a message fails to send, in addition to the LED blinking red. Um, yeah. The Arduino Nano was our microcontroller, um, but perhaps the most important part is this um, Navy component at the top, and that represents our Phona 808 module, and that's what provides uh, GSM and GPS capability, so that's how the messages are actually sent, 
And then everything in the case is powered by three AAA bat or three AA batteries. So this is our initial hardware build. Um, it's basically an implementation on a solderable breadboard of the electronics I showed in the last picture. So you can see the safe open, cancel buttons, the buzzer, the LED, the phono module, the battery pack, the microcontroller, and the read switches. So another one of our deliverables that was closely tied to the case was the web application. Um, and so I didn't focus uh, I, on this as my um, primary focus throughout this process, but um, it does interact with the case in a, a lot of important ways. So this is where the um, support contact numbers are customized. So if you want to, right now, um, emergency services have SMS capability. So if you want to put that in or for children, um, if you want to contact your parents first, you can put that. Um, this is where you actually add an EpiPen, and after an emergency, that EpiPen is deactivated in the web application because you can't um, reuse EpiPen. So it's a way to track um, EpiPens by their expiration date. Um, and this is where uh, emergency history is stored as well. So this is how the case and the web application interact. The case is what detects the emergency message and sends a, um, an SMS message via the phone through Twilio, um, which is a cloud platform. And that uh, the web application listens for that message and then goes through a table to find that user's um, support contacts. And then the web application sends a message through Twilio to um, the customizable support contacts. So let's see if this will work, this is a video. What? I am. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, so um, I'm just gonna go through this. But this is a video of how our web application actually works. So um, this is um, after you log, after you navigate to the website, um, you create a new user. And so this is the page to do that. And essentially you add, um, three support contact numbers, and you can add some other information. And then you use that information to log in to your account. And the first thing you have to do is add an EpiPen. So this is where you add the EpiPen's expiration date so you can be notified before it expires. And this next page is where you can track emergency history. So you can view locations of previous emergencies. And um, you can also go to your My Profile page and edit any information that you want. So you can change your support contact numbers throughout, and you can log out, and it returns back to the home page. So um, part of our design process, we had to actually create the case. So um, that was the next step. So this is our final um, CAD drawing of what the top of the case looks like. So this is what actually holds the electronics. Um, so you can see here, this is the top, and it has um, an opening for the LED, for the cancel button, and for the safe open button. Um, and the next slide is a sliding lid. So this is what closes the electronics um, so that the user can't access them, but we could if we want to make any modifications or show them to our customer. So this is the bottom of the case. This is where the EpiPen rests. Um, and it is attached to the top with um, clasps and uh, acrylic hinges. So our third deliverable was uh, the wearable component. Uh, we struggled a lot with um, how to create this very precise microlocation detection technology. Um, so we decided that the best thing to do would be to buy it online. So um, we bought this child proximity center, which is like an electronic child leash. And we, um, um, so we d decided to buy that and we took it apart. So um, the fish is what we took apart and we modified the electronics so it could actually be fit, fit into the case on the solderable breadboard and be powered um, by the same AA batteries that power the rest of the electronics. Um, so the fish is inside the case um, and this receiver is what the user would wear and if it has an adjustable distance setting, and um, once the transmitter and receiver are separated by a specific distance um, that's set by that rolling receiver um, button, I guess, <laughs> um, then the receiver alarms and lets you know that you've left your EpiPen behind. So this is a video of the case actually working, hopefully. <laughs> so you press the safe open button, the LED turns purple, and you can open and close your case to um, remove your EpiPen. 
Um, when you open the case, that's what triggers an emergency. So after a second, the LED turns green um, to indicate that a message has sent successfully. And you can press the cancel button inside the case to send a false alarm message to your three emergency support contacts and the LED turns yellow. So overall, we consider this um, a success as we've met all of our customer requirements, um, specifically that we can detect emergencies, that we can send GPS locations, um, confirm whether the message has um, sent or received, and then have those customizable support contacts and tracking of emergency data. Um, in the future, future prototypes, uh, we would want to minimize the size. As you can see, it's a little bulky, um, still portable, but um, we'd like to reduce some of that empty space um, inside the electronics. Um, and that's definitely doable. And we would like to maximize battery life as much as possible. But overall, our customer was really satisfied. So um, we consider that a success. So thank you so much. Hi. Any questions? Yeah? Um, do you think you can benefit from using like lithium batteries? Um, yeah, so we, um, our phone module actually runs off of um, a lithium battery. Uh, our goal was to have it have um, AA batteries because you it would be easier for a customer to replace them. Um, so we had to modify how the phone module actually is powered. Um, so yeah, we would like to stick to AA or AAA batteries because it's easier for a customer. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Hi. So I'm aware of the controversy around the expense of SD pins. Um, was the $300 at the end what it would cost a consumer or an insurance company, or is that what it costs to make? Um, that's what it, every all of our components cost. So buying buttons, solderable breadboards, printing the case, um, buying the wearable, buying the data plans. Um, so that was all of that, and it doesn't include an EpiPen. That was great. Thank um, so you. you mentioned you're the only electrical engineer. The other expertise was? Computer engineering. Yeah, so I had four computer engineers, and I was the electrical engineer on the team. <laughs> yeah. OK. Thank you so much.